Hi, and welcome to the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. So here we are at Kansas Fest. Hi, I'm Javier Rivera, Applesauce spokesman. Uh, I'm going to talk about it. That on the f- next hour, you will know everything you want to know about applesauce. It's yummy. <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs> So what we have is the Applesauce Floppy Drive Controller Kit from John Kenny Morris. And let's see what's inside here. So this kit basically allows you to hook up a Apple Disk 2 drive or a five and a quarter inch half height drive to a Mac using a USB cable. And it lets you read floppy disks at either a regular disk level or at the flux level. By including a sync sensor which easily mounts inside the disk 2, you can actually copy copy protected games at the flux level and then it will maintain and preserve the copy protection. this right underneath the spindle right up to the edge but not going over the edge and now make sure as you turn the spindle that it doesn't hit at all and if it does catch up here what you can do is very carefully use a flathead screwdriver and just pry up the spindle just a tiny bit and then finally we need to mount the magnetic sensor and to do that what you need to do is bend the little wire here with the sensor to a 90 degree angle but make sure that it's at the correct height so it's just underneath the magnet but not actually hitting it and in my case what I had to do is because I don't actually have much room here in this particular Shugart drive I had to kind of bend it backwards a little bit and then angle it and so what you want to do is you also want to make it so that you can actually get the cable out again from the socket I'm going to go ahead and mount it pretty much just like this and you want to get it so that the sensor is directly underneath the magnet and once it is we can peel back the double stick tape and stick it down. Just a quick note, I was able to mount my sync sensor underneath on the drive wheel but if there's not enough room on your particular drive what you can do instead is mount it inside on top and you just put the magnet underneath the little rotating wheel that goes under the disc itself and then you mount the sensor just down on the bottom of the drive and if you do it this way you might need to actually use a couple extra pieces of double stick tape just to raise it up high enough so that the sensor is close enough to the magnet. So we've got the sync sensor installed at the correct height so it passes just underneath the magnet. Let's plug in the cables. So here is the sync sensor cable. Then we'll plug in the floppy drive cable and be sure to plug this in with the cable facing downwards and verify that the red striped line is on the left hand side. And then finally we'll plug in the 16 volt DC adapter. I've gone ahead and plugged in the Applesauce into my USB on my laptop and I have fired up the Applesauce software application and we're just going to do a quick drive test just to make sure that the sync sensor is hooked up correctly. So I've gone into calibrate mode and then we'll just click speed test and you can hear the drive spinning and then it's telling me that I'm up to 300 RPMs, it also tells me the rotation time and so everything looks really good as far as my floppy goes. Now let's just try the fast imager. So this is just a DOS 3.3 disk and the fast imager just does a really quick kind of track sector copy Uh, and this would be primarily for disks that don't have any copy protection or have very weak copy protection. And so you can see it just goes across copying all the tracks and sectors 
it will highlight in red any bad ones and it'll retry several times if it does encounter a bad one. I can give it a name. So here this is my assembly lines programs and the format I can save it as either a .was which contains all the extra information about when it was contains all the extra metadata information or I can just save it as a simple .dsk. So let's save it as a .was file. All right, let's right click on it and we'll say open with virtual2 and just make sure this is the latest version of virtual2 which can now handle WAS files. So you can see there it is, it opens it up fine, there's all my data. So let's try something a little bit harder now for applesauce and we'll switch back to the app and we'll try this game Torpedo that I keep trying to crack. This was created with the arcade machine back when I was probably 14 or 15. And so let's try and image that and see what happens. Okay, you can see, so blue indicates it's having trouble and then red just indicates that it wasn't able to read it at all. So as we'd expect, there's no way to read this disc using normal disc imaging. So let's switch to the flux imager now. The Flux Integer does a two pass on the disk and it goes in quarter tracks and reads all of the quarter track information and then it'll go ahead and do a second pass where it reads everything again and then does a comparison between the two. And so this will produce a raw image file with a file suffix of A2R. We can also go ahead and fill in some uh, metadata here. Now it's doing the second pass. Okay, we can go ahead and save that. Okay, so you can see that Applesauce saved a PNG, which is just an image of the flux data on the disk. And here's the A2R, and if we look at that, this is an 11 meg file which contains all of the flux data that it read. So we could import this back into Applesauce if we wished and try to then write it out as a WAS. Uh, okay, the last option is the disk writer. And right now this will only load and write DSK images to the disk. Um, if you do want to write one, you got to make sure to flip the switch on the applesauce from safe mode over to write mode. And it will scan the flux stream off of the disk at about... Oh, and say that again? It will... Scan the flux stream. Uh-huh. So basically it'll spin the disk, look at what is on, what is actually sitting there, uh -huh. and then interpret the whole thing. Hmm. And so, and you're plugging into USB, is that right? Like, yep, yep. So it's just I don't have an adapter, and so basically it'll allow you to image things with enough accuracy that it can capture things like copy protection. That's cool. And along with it, I've developed a new file format. It's called the WAS format and it basically allows you to contain bit streams that also can replicate copy protection. Hmm. So you can image disks and be able to run them in emulation and they will all pass their copy protection checks hmm. being just oh, virtual right. disks. Right. Huh. So, um, so it's kind of a two-piece thing with some hardware and some software. And wow. So we can... So is it um, basically reversible for the disk too? You can, you know, once you've modified your, your floppy drive, you can take it back out? And like um, you, can, you can leave the sensor in there. It does not connect electrically uh, at all. So, so you can just leave this dangling off, plug it into your Apple II. You're good to go. Awesome. You don't need to like dedicate one to this. Cool. So, put it in safe mode. This has a switch on the front for safe mode. Mm -hmm. When this is on, it's electrically locking it down so that even if there's catastrophic failure somewhere, it cannot write to the disk. Hmm. So, let's just do a try to do a quick image, see what it thinks about it. Oh, it's coming in just fine. So the fast imager takes about 12 seconds to image the disk. And then it says it got just fine. So now we can 
Well, I'll just write out. It's a well, this looks like it's two sided, but. Oh. You can give it a little name. Just copy what's off the label, kind of thing. Yeah. That's what, whatever the label says is what I know about it. <laughs> And so we can save it. So I just saved it as a disk image. And then in a GS emulator like Sweet 16 or, or, mm -hmm. any or virtual tour or anything, you could just boot it up and have access to the Great. disk. So that disk, it successfully got all sectors off of it. Wow. Can you boot it and see, like in virtual tour? Yeah. Something to see? I don't know. I don't know if it's bootable. It's called letters, so I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, but it'd be correspondence from. I'm curious, like mm -hmm. what year and just what. But. I mean, there's file names here. I don't think this is gonna boot for us. I would get. Yeah, I don't. I think it's just data. I think it is what it mm -hmm. says. I think it's files, and who knows even what where they're written in the correspondent. Gee, somebody. Oh, it says correspondent data disk. Some somebody made a custom. <laughs> yeah, that would be. Tracks zero sector zero. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, that's not normal. Yeah, so that so, would be letters written in the correspondent. Um, be really cool. Is there a is there a date? Can you tell anything about the dates on the files? Um. Oh, did you have this is DOS 3.3 though, right? Mm, well, not necessarily. This could this if it's, it depends oh, yeah, on your. Oh yeah, no, yeah. This is, yeah, it says DOS 3.3. Oh, okay. Right. So you're not gonna have any dates, right? No. Oh, it doesn't. DOS 3 doesn't have dates. No. Nope. Um, I don't think so. Does it? One ten eighty five. One nine eighty five. Yeah, there are some dates on it. Huh. That one seven nineteen eighty five. I mean, it's really small label here. I don't know if I got a DOS disk. Unfortunately, I just kind of threw a bunch of stuff on the computer, uh -huh. so I'm like oh, so terribly just, unprepared for much of anything. Okay. So I don't know if I have a. Well, it's DOS actually, I'd rather have to spend the time if you don't mind to see what we can save or yeah. or leave it here. I mean, it doesn't all have to be tonight. It can just be whatever. Mm -hmm. But we yeah, really need if we, I could actually find the letter that I sent to Sierra Online and everybody inviting them on the hang gliding trip, for example. Uh, yeah, this is like Epson, Evans, SWI, Raven, Leonard, Neiman Ross. Huh. The disk uh -huh. and get it all going and then try to retry the battery uh -huh. and it'll keep any data right. that you've already accumulated right. and then just wow. keep working on it. So. We've had discs that just that were really in bad shape, huh. you know, just r really like mildewed and, you and build, stuff. Huh? I was gonna say, couldn't you build a version that would read eight-inch discs and have the government pay huge amounts of money to <laughs> re-access re data? That probably. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife says I should do that, and I'm like, yeah, I'd rather sell just some to some hobbyists. Yeah. How many times does it try then? Um, um, well, it'll vary. It'll, okay, so for, for, for direct... Let me look for the next most interesting one. For a direct thing, it'll do 10 retries before it tries to come up with more complex Business. data recovery. Okay, that's the letter. Okay, so we at that one. So what's, what's the complex data recovery? Um, it starts trying to reverse out checksums. Uh -huh. Look on neighboring that border tracks, do all kinds of. Big Mac, that's the Merlin before it was Merlin. Uh huh. That's a just Ooh, image of cool. Big Mac. What about symbol Simon? <laughs> Maybe it went with it. It was a source. Who knows? Apple Doc. I don't know if I need the source code for that still. Mm -hmm. Laser lower T plus something. software. Oh, didn't get that sector. Uh, one bad sector on this desk. Database and capabilities. That probably could, that could be like a demo disk from John 1, Eric 1. No idea. That could be interesting. Well, miscellaneous and progress utility, that would be interesting. So, Grope and slot. Yeah, we're not getting that one sector on there. Oh. Oh, we got the rest of the, of the disc. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't have any, any alcohol here for us. Right now, I'm trying mm -hmm. to like clean, okay. physically clean Eric the disc. E. And you don't have a way of like auto naming the discs or something? You know, like if you just had the image. 
like the no, hundred of them or something. No, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Unfortunately, that would be a good thing to put. White means not much. White means all FFs basically. Yeah, but if you do a DOS three two one formatted disk, mm -hmm. it fills everything. Basically, there's no data field. Mm -hmm. It fills it all with FFs hmm. because it'll create just your address field and a field of FFs that's large enough for it. Hmm. So mm -hmm. this is, you know, you have boot sec, you have your two boot tracks. This is probably about 11 or so. And then when it allocates, when you save files to it, it always starts going towards the end of the disk. So mm -hmm. it starts at 12 and working mm -hmm. back. And then once it gets to the end there, then it kind of goes to the beginning. So looks like it looks like you had 11, there's a few files on the disk. Hmm. But not much. The disk is mostly empty. Hmm. Yeah. A few files on it. I'd forgotten that three two did FFs for the empty space. Yeah. Well, three two one did. Three two hmm. left it completely empty, and so it's just like random, random. garbage in there, ah. and then it just fires it into it. But it was hugely unreliable to do it that way. So that's why three two one they changed to filling with FFs. So we've taken a look at John Morris's applesauce kit and seen how it can preserve disks that have copy protection or old disks that may have problems. And the kit works great, the software is excellent, so I'd strongly urge you to pick up one of the kits if you have a chance. I'll have a link in the show notes to where to get one. And this is Chris Torrance, live from Kansas Fest 2018. Thanks for watching. And this is all you need to know about applesauce. Reporting live from Kansas Fest, this is Javier Rivera. Bye-bye.